Hey guys, now when you think of something really, really big and it comes out of Japan and you call it the king of something, what are you thinking about? For me, growing up, it's Godzilla! King of the Monsters! 1954 movie. Actually, it's the American version where they uh, dubbed in, you know, uh, Raymond Burr and put him into the movie. And then you've got the, the newer edition that just came out within the last couple of years. Godzilla! King of Monsters! That's that's where my thoughts go. And don't make fun of me because I still have VHS tapes. I've got a lot of VHS here. Why? Because I'm old. <laughs> well, anyway. Um, here's one that was on my wish list for quite some time. This is the King of Pen. Now, I don't know how much Godzilla is really going to like the idea of something else from Japan being called a king of anything. I mean, I would be really... But anyway, this is a pen that was on my wish list for quite some time, and it is not mine. Actually, it's still on my wish list, I'm thinking. Uh, this is on loan to me from a friend and pen pal of mine, Padrino. You may see him on Instagram. I suggest you go check out his Instagram feed, because he has a lot of really cool pens that he does like for his pen of the day, almost every single day. He's much more consistent with that than I am because I don't change every single day like I used to. I use pens a lot longer period of time, so it's no longer just pen of the day. Sometimes it's pen of the week, really. Or just whenever I get the wild hair to change it out. So anyway, the Sailor King of Pen. Now, I'm assuming it's not King of Pens, because it's uh, in Japanese. I'm told that they don't have uh, the plurals like we do. So it's King of Pen, not King of Pen. And this happens to be the Stormy Seas Edition that's been out for a little while. Um, the Stormy Seas Edition actually uh, was released very successfully, uh, the color that is, in like the Sailor 1911 Large. Uh, and this particular pen has disappointed some in that it doesn't come with like, fine and extra fine. It was only released with medium and broad because of the size of the nib and the sheer manufacturing involved with it. So I'll show you all that here and I'll give you a comparison with some other pens. I'll give you some dimensions. I'll tell you what I like and don't like about it. We'll do a writing sample of it and hopefully Godzilla will kind of stay out of my way. Now, because this is not my personal pen and I did not get it brand new, this pen is just on loan, so I don't have the box and the packaging to show you that it comes in. I'm sure you can find other videos. For instance, Anderson Pens actually has a very nice little video on this particular pen. But what I wanted to do is show you some little brothers to it so you can see a size comparison and how that pen stacks up against others within its class. So let's start with this one way down here. This is my son Matthew's pen. It is a Sailor 1911. So uh, that was given to him uh, by somebody that uh, has watched and seen and liked him. And uh, so I greatly appreciate the, uh, the gift from that lady. Uh, and this right next to it is a Sailor Prophet. Branded as the Sailor Prophet, P-R-O-F-I-T, which is in my collection. I have to be honest, Sailor has not been at the top of my list. A couple of things, I'm not a big fan of Japanese or Asian nibs. That's just me. So I kind of hemmed in hot over the idea of whether I even wanted to pursue a Sailor King of Pen. I had it on my wish list because it was a really nice looking pen. I like the oversize. I kind of like uh, how they look. And I kind of liked how they wrote for the most part. So, But I've just never had one uh, with which to use for any length of time until now. So this is the Sailor King of Pen that I just showed you that Godzilla was about to eat. Right next to it, right here, is uh, a brand you may not be familiar with, but I do have a video on it. It's a Jean-Pierre Lapine, a uh, French pen manufacturer, and it's an oversized, big old fat pen. I actually picked that up from Papier Plume when I was in their shop down in New Orleans, Louisiana. Come over one right here. Uh, we have the Mont Blanc 149. Uh, and you can see the size comparison between the two. The King of Pen is actually a little bit bigger, uh, slightly in girth and slightly in length than the Mont Blanc. 
Move it over, the Jinhao 159, and uh, you know that basically the the Chinese version of the Mont Blanc. Uh, 159 is not a bad pen, and especially because you can, uh, it's it's the oversized um, Jinhao that a lot of people like. It's become really popular. Matthew has some, I have some, um, and you can put in some really good nibs into those, and they can be pretty well serviceable. Come over here one more slot. Uh, and we have the Monteverde Giant Sequoia. So you can see the size comparison there. For something called a giant, well, it's not as big as the King of Monster, I mean King of Pen. All right, so let's go over to the last slot here. We have the Pelican M1000, which is one of the largest Pelicans uh, that they've got. And uh, that is a great big old beautiful nib on it. And you can see how that compares lengthwise compared to the King of Monster, I mean King of Pen. All right, so let's take a little more look at the Sailor King of Pen. You've got a nice domed finial up here at the top, which is fairly typical uh, when you look at like the Sailor 1911. Uh, it's a very similar shape. It's just on a much bigger scale. And uh, you've got the same concept of a clip, essentially the same shape clip, just a little bigger. And you've got a uh, different cat band here. And at the tail end, because it's like really big by comparison, uh, but if you look at the Sailor Prophet, it does have the same kind of taper down to a band here at that end. So it's got that kind of concept going on with it that is very typical of Sailor. It's got some nice silver trim here against that blue, that Stormy Seas blue, which I really do like this blue. I mean, I, I've i actually thought about getting the 1911 large version of the Sailor uh, and, and, and the Stormy Seas, because it's a just right, beautiful color. You look here at the cap band, it does say right on it, Sailor, King of Pen, 1911, uh, and I'll give you some more close-up of that. It is a screw top, and you look, it's got a great big gold, beautiful 21 karat gold nib with rhodium plating. On it. I'll give you some better pictures of that as well. It is a cartridge converter pin, enormous barrel there, and you can tell I am almost out of ink. I mean, it is almost dry on me right now. Um, and uh, it does have a nice little ink window. I've been using this a lot, so I've about run this entire converter dry. I went ahead and inked this baby up uh, with an ink that I really like. I got this not too long ago. I've uh, been wanting to try this particular color. Finally broke down and bought it. Uh, Waterman Inspired Blue, which I thought fairly well complemented the Stormy Seas color of the 1911 King of Pen by Sailor. So taking a look at it, it's big and chunky. I mean, I've got fairly big paws, and this actually fits into my hand really well. If you've got a Mont Blanc 149 and you like it, you're really going to like this. If you like the, the 159 by Jin Hao, you're going to like this. Uh, the Giant Sequoia, any of the other pens, you're really going to like it. Um, I will tell you, for me, in general, pens this size, even though I really enjoy the, uh, the girth of it, I enjoy how well that fits in my hand, me personally, when I go to write with it for an extended period of time, it actually makes me get hand cramps. I'm told that for people who have arthritis, uh, that the big, bigger, chunkier pens are actually a whole lot better for them to be able to hold and use. Now, for $880, the going rate for this pen right now, uh, US dollars, eh, if you've got arthritis, that may be a little high for you, I don't know. Uh, but I will tell you, you're getting a good quality writing instrument uh, with the King of Pen. I've been fairly impressed with how it writes. Um, I will tell you that um, even though it says it's a medium, it actually writes a little bit on the fine side. And that is not a typical of a Japanese medium compared to a Western medium nib. They tend to write more like a Western fine. I find that on a lot of pens, not just on this particular pen. Let me give you a nib comparison uh, between the standard 1911 versus the King of Pen nib. You can see there's a huge difference. I mean, we're talking about twice the size 
of the nib. Uh, and this particular nib is a little bit rigid. I mean, I, I was actually surprised that it uh, was as stiff as it was, but that doesn't bother me because actually I like stiffer nibs. I don't have to have flex nibs. They don't have to be a wet noodle. I actually like and prefer generally um, a good stiff nib over a, uh, a softer, more flexible nib any day. Um, and this uh, particular pen almost writes like an accountant nib. Um, it, what it reminded me actually of the old Waterman's uh, that you might have found that had an accountant nib just because of the feel of it. Because it actually writes very well, writes fairly smooth, and does a fairly thin line. So, why don't I just go ahead and give you all the statistics of this particular pen. And then we'll come back and I'll do a writing sample. When you go to write with this big boy, you can post this on the back end. Uh, it does back weight it a little bit, but quite honestly, it is so big, you don't need to whatsoever. So here we go. The Sailor 1911 King of Pen. This came with a medium nib. And the nibs were only available in both medium and broad, as I told you earlier. And one of the things I said about it is it actually seems to be a very rigid nib. And when, But it's only rigid if you decide that you're not going to give a lot of pressure to it, because you can actually get line variation out of it, and you can get a little bit of spring to it. But as you're just holding it, and you are just move it along with it without putting a whole lot of pressure and letting the pen do its own job. It actually almost acts like a rigid nib and uh, almost like an accounting style nib. And like I said too, it also writes a little bit on the fine side of medium, which I actually kind of like um, in that um, it's not a real thick line, it's not a real broad line. On this particular paper, it does fairly well in showing the more medium side rather than the more fine side of it. I've had other paper uh, that was very different in how it wrote, and it actually had a much finer line than this, especially when I was writing some letters with it. And when, when you're using, like, copy paper, which I use to do my checkbook, um, then it actually seems a lot more fine uh, than it does on this, which is a lot more fountain pen friendly. Uh, this particular nib, though, this pen has been very reliable. It has uh, been fairly smooth. You can hear some feedback to it, yes. Um, but it has been very reliable. Every time I've picked it up and written with it, it's done well. I told you I put into it some of the Waterman inspired blue. Which actually, even since uh, I was showing you earlier how I was running out of blue ink in this thing, I just had to refill it and reshoot <laughs> this portion of the video uh, because I literally ran out of ink as I was doing it. So anyway, I'm fairly happy uh, with how it writes. All right. So, what do I like about it? I like the size of the pen. I really do. I like oversized pens, as you can tell by the ones that I had shown you. Um, I do like the, uh, the silver trim. The color is gorgeous. It's almost a metallic blue. Uh, so, it, it's right up my choice of colors in a pen. I enjoy the color of this. Like I said, I thought about going with um, the Sailor 1911 Large, as it is. Um, that came out that was real popular in the Stormy Seas Blue. Sailor King of Pen. Um, after using it and writing with it an awful lot, um, I'm still debating whether or not I'm actually going to buy it. Why? Well, number one, is it worth to me $880 for a big old sailor? 
I don't have a lot of sailors in my collection. As a matter of fact, I've used a bunch of them, and as you can see, that uh, Black Prophet is the only one that I own, and Matthew has only one in his collection too. Um, I was hesitant to spend the kind of money, which is why I'm glad that I got this on loan. Um, so I got the chance to play with it, touch it, feel it. I love the way it feels in my hand. I love the weight of it. It's got a good amount of heft to it. Um, it's reliable. It has been an excellent writer. I've written a lot of letters with it, a lot of notes with it, done my checkbook with it. Um, I've used it extensively over the past couple of weeks and I've carried it with me an awful lot. And uh, alas, it's time to send it back home to its owner so I don't end up uh, you know, being accused of stealing it. So, uh, But I, I like it. I, I really do. Um, I don't like the price tag, but you know, it may be, you know, looking at the King of Pen uh, in various versions, I, I guess, um, I, I mean, I've looked at and actually saved in my watch list uh, even a demonstrator version of it, and, you know, less than the 880, I mean, significantly less, a couple hundred dollars less. So I've, I've literally thought about getting um, that demonstrator version direct from Japan. Um, but um, I don't know. I'm still thinking about it because I'm trying to bring myself to the uh, realization, should I or should I not? Because it's uh, I've not loved most of the sailors I've touched. I've actually enjoyed this one. So um, I'm leaning towards if, if I had one or if I had the opportunity to get one at a really good price, I might actually consider it. I like the nib on it. Um, this is a, uh, a really good, reliable nib and I've been enjoying that nib and writing with it uh, but like I said for me oversized pens do cramp my hand after sitting down and trying to write an entire page or two of a letter so I have to change out my pen every so often so that's where I'm wondering if I wanted to step down uh, and go with the uh, Sailor Large 1911 for that very reason alone because my Mont Blanc 149, I actually like my 146 better than my 149 and using it on a regular basis. So that's something I'm taking into consideration. But I don't know. Um, like I said, I like the pen. I don't know if I like it $880 worth yet, but I do like it. So there's something to consider. Sailor, 1911, king of pen. Is it, would, it, would you add it to your collection? Yeah, feel free to comment down below. Hey, thanks for watching. Uh, I've got some more videos planned, and uh, I'll try to keep them coming as long as you keep watching and subscribing.